Welcome back to Wild Drama Stories. Story number one. Opie writes, Here goes. So my girlfriend Francesca, 33 female, and I, 34 male, we've been together for a couple of years now. We both smoke cannabis, though I limit myself to fortnightly sessions due to tolerance buildup from my teenage years. Francesca, on the other hand, has a penchant for drinking, which she does every weekend. We attended my cousin's wedding not too long ago. Now, I'm not much of a drinker, but Francesca convinced me to swap my usual joint for a few rounds of drinks at the reception. I got more drunk than I've ever been, and I stumbled upon Francesca doing cocaine with Sean, 31 male, my other cousin. Sean and I aren't close. He sees me as a weirdo who gets high all the time, while I see him as an arrogant, spoiled bully. It felt like a slap in the face to find them together like that, even more so when Francesca brushed it off as her, quote, just having a good time, unquote. Despite our argument, we ended up in bed together. The next morning, I woke up to find her gone. My heart sank, but I tried not to jump to conclusions. Down at the reception, I overheard some of Sean's friends joke about how Sean was shagging his cousin's girlfriend. I confronted them, demanded to know which room they were in, and insisted one of them come with me. The sound of sex was audible before we even reached the room. I told Sean's friend to knock and get Sean out without telling him why. After repeated shouting and knocking, Sean opened the door to see me. He backed away. I followed him into the room. Francesca, my Francesca, was in bed, looking shocked and asking, what is it? Sean stayed silent. I could only stand there as she became hysterical, claiming it's not what it looks like, but it was exactly what it looked like. I left without saying a word. So that's my story, Reddit. I'm feeling a mix of betrayal, anger, and confusion right now. I'm open to any advice, any words of wisdom, as I navigate through this. Thanks for reading. And yes, Opie's update. Hey again, Reddit. I'm still trying to come to terms with everything that's happened since that night at the wedding. I've read every single one of your comments on my previous post, and I can't begin to express how much your words of support have meant to me. Francesca has been incessantly trying to reach me. Calls, texts, even showing up at my apartment. You name it. She's desperate to explain, to justify what happened. But honestly, I've been too numb and too hurt to listen. Sean? Well, he's been disturbingly silent towards me. However, he's been more vocal about the situation with the rest of our cousins. I found out he's been boasting about what happened that night. I only got wind of this when an uncle reprimanded him for his behavior. To say I'm disgusted would be an understatement. And the reaction from my other cousins? Well, it's been far from supportive. Many are content to laugh at my expense. And it feels like an additional betrayal. They've started referring to me as cock, which is not only immature but also incredibly hurtful. I've decided I don't need that kind of negativity in my life right now. As for Francesca, we still haven't spoken. I'm not sure I'm ready to hear her side of things yet, but I know I will need to at some point. I need that closure to move forward. Right now, my focus is on myself. I'm trying to regain a sense of normalcy, taking one day at a time. I'm reconnecting with old hobbies, trying to find joy in the little things again. I know there's a long road ahead, healing isn't linear, and I expect there will be good days and bad days, but I'm taking the first steps, and that's what matters. I'll update again when there's more to share. Until then, thank you for your continued support. It means more than words can express. Mini update. My cousin Lucille called me today to apologize. She seemed genuinely remorseful, which was a change. She also informed me about a new lie Sean's been spreading, that Francesca and I had an open relationship and her sleeping with other men was part of our kink. According to him, I was just annoyed that he got involved. I can't say I'm surprised by Sean's behavior, but it's still disheartening. However, it's a clear reminder of why I've chosen to distance myself from that part of the family. Update 2. Since my last post, I've made arrangements to attend therapy regularly. It's a lifeline and should help me navigate this mess. 
I'm still not speaking with my other cousins. Their lack of empathy and respect has left a sour taste, and I'm not sure that will ever change. However, I did speak with Rona, Francesca's sister. She came over to pick up her stuff, and what she revealed shocked and disgusted me. Francesca has a history of infidelity, often with men who are drug dealers, to settle her debts. I was so sickened by this information that I physically threw up. Many of you were right. The cheating and the coke were not the first time this has happened. How the heck did I not notice any of the signs? I immediately called my doctor to get tested for STDs. These days, waiting for the results are some of the most stressful I've experienced. To say I'm devastated would be an understatement. I'm back at square one, reeling from the hurt and the humiliation. But I'm going to continue with my therapy and try to learn from this painful experience. Thank you Reddit for being here. Your your support means more than you know. I'll keep you updated on my progress. Opie, I'm sorry that that happened to you and your own family. That always gets me when it's a family member that does this to a person. And in this case, not just the one cousin, but the others kind of joining in and taunting you. You're right, it is childish, it's immature. It's also incredibly insensitive and hurtful. And just why? Why do they find that necessary to joke about it? As for your ex-girlfriend, it's almost laughable, Opie, that she said, it's not what it looks like. And as you said, it was exactly what it looked like. I don't know why people even say that. It's not what it looks like. And Opie, I can tell that you're taking your therapy very seriously, that you're working on yourself on getting through all of this. Apart from that, Opie, I feel that Francesca was just dragging you down. And as much as it hurts right now, the day will come, Opie, I guarantee the day will come when you will see all of this for the blessing in disguise that it is. You're going to say to yourself, why was I ever involved with somebody like that? What was I thinking? Her exit has opened you up now for something better to come your way. And I do believe it will, Opie. Story number two. Opie writes, You see this? This one needs to be told. I don't care what anyone says. Fate is real. I've never really told anyone, but the first person I've ever hated was a girl from my childhood who stole my precious balloon. I was about nine at the time and was an inpatient for private reasons. The hospital was pretty far from home, so my parents couldn't see me often. But on one particular day, my mom left me a balloon with a get well soon on it. I was fixated on it because it made me feel close to my parents. So I would take it with me wherever I was taken. And then that evening, curious me went out of my ward and ended up getting lost because tons of people were all over the place. The balloon ended up slipping away and I went after it, only for this one girl about my age to grab it. Well, when I asked for my balloon back, she refused and ran off to her mom. I was a very reserved kid and was scared of confronting her, especially with her mom. So I let her take it away. I was pretty sad because the balloon was special to me, but I eventually let it go, even though the grudge has always remained till today. Now, I matched with this girl on Tinder and things have been going very well. On our most recent date, we discussed our past regrets and all that. And then she tells me about the time she stole a balloon at a hospital from a boy years ago, but has since regretted it. She says she would apologize to the boy given the chance. I was shocked, like legitimately shocked. At first I wasn't sure, cause I thought my mind was playing tricks on me. So I led her on for more information, and she revealed many more details that made me 100% sure she was that same girl. I couldn't stop laughing out loud, and she'd been trying to figure out why. I said I just found it really funny, but didn't tell her that boy is literally me. She explained that she really liked the balloon, and she told her mom the boy gifted it to her, and now it makes sense why the mother waved at me back then. Like I genuinely cannot believe the same person who stole my balloon years ago, my one truest antagonist, my villain original story, has been staring at me right in the face. The worst part is, I don't know how to deal with the grudge now, and it's just so funny to me that this is happening. I'm just waiting for the perfect chance to tell her and see the look on her face. Edit. Thanks for reading your all, but why does everyone think I want revenge? I just want to surprise her, that's all. I didn't tell her at that moment, because I didn't think she'd believe me. I do have details that only the both of us could know, but I thought I needed something stronger, like a picture of me at that time. 
I see how it could come off as creepy, but I have this well planned. No creepiness at all. And some of your suggestions are so wild. I repeat, I don't want to hurt her. I just want the shock value. Here's Opie's update. Honestly, this update came sooner than I'd have wanted, since everything didn't go as planned. I'm going to try explain in as much detail as I can, so it's longish, but you can skip to the reaction if you want. Original plan. The original plan was to get a similar balloon as you suggested. Thing is, that balloon was slightly complicated. It was one of those heart-shaped ones and had multiple colored dots on it. So it was going to take a bit of time to find one. I also managed to find my old photos during my time in hospital from my mom's album. Generally, I was going to stick the photo to my forehead, have the identical balloon with me, and wear something identical to those hospital gowns. Call her over and let her get dumbfounded by what's going on, and then clutch onto my balloon for dear life, and say, this time she can't take my balloon, then have her figure it all out by herself. Okay, maybe not the gown thing, cause I can imagine it being really weird from her perspective, but you get the point, to make it reminiscent of that time she stole my balloon. Reaction. Well, those plans ended when I got a call from her, telling me I wouldn't believe a post she saw on TikTok from a Reddit post, and then proceeded to explain my whole post to me, and at this point my heart was racing. She asked me if it was me, but I denied like my life depended on it. Like I didn't even know what Reddit was and said she was trying to mess with me. Even after she told me to search it, I still said I didn't see it and used that moment to ask her to come over to prove it. And then later, she did show up and immediately had her phone to my face, laughing and saying, there was no way this wasn't me because of the timing and details. I still denied and eventually, when we were sitting down, listening to the post together, I said, it's so crazy. And she asked me one last time to reaffirm to her that it wasn't me. And I told her, no, it wasn't. The confusion she had was funny. Because I could tell she was trying to wrap her brain around this. And I was like, it's so crazy that these things happen. Then slowly started mentioning the accurate details. Like along the lines of, it's so crazy that you'd meet the person who stole your heart-shaped spotted balloon as a kid on a busy hallway, and then not tell her it was you, and instead make a whole Reddit post, because you planned to surprise her, but the post landed on TikTok, and she caught wind of it, and you're still denying whilst literally sitting next to her. And midway between that, she was already gasping, and she hit me with a cushion, telling me to shut up. I legit couldn't contain my laughter, and she was pacing up and down, saying there was no way this was happening. And I said it was me, and that it was about time she gave me my balloon back. I even went to fetch that album, and showed her my pictures during my hospital stay, and she immediately started apologizing. I told her I was over it, and the post was over-exaggerated for clicks, but she said she still wanted to apologize anyway, and I also apologized not saying it then, because I didn't think she would believe me, and she said she definitely would have. We talked a bit more, and she promised to buy me a balloon. Extra. I'm going to have a field telling this to my children at 80-something. I don't no, the life expectancy year isn't that high. Oh, and the hate effing suggestion crew. I pray for all of you. Find salvation. She read every single comment and you all better apologize. Maybe I'll update when I get that balloon. Her mom would also like to see me. So that's probably the last thing you'll get out of me. Thanks for being here, I guess. Well, Opie, that is quite a story. And who would have thought that all these years later you would find yourself on a date with a girl that stole your balloon when you were nine years old? But anyway, Opie, I hope the two of you continue to see each other and who knows what the future will bring. But I do think balloons will have a very special place in your relationship or friendship, whichever it turns out to be. Story number three. Opie writes, I wrote my husband a letter and a list of things he could do to help improve our marriage. And his reply was, F it all, run for your life. Honestly, not the reply I was hoping for. My list ranged from help with meal planning, pick at least two meals a week, and things like that to help with the mental load, as well as stuff like get your taxes done. His bank account is currently frozen because he's not done them since 2012. And get a driver's license, expired 
since 2014. Honestly, I should have taken a better look around before I got into this relationship with him. I accept responsibility for what I've done. I know the anger I've let build up has changed us. I was really hoping he would take action on some of these things and I could see him taking action and let some of that anger go. Honestly, I thought he'd have more effing backbone. I thought he'd say he could try. We are raising four children together. I hate the thought of destroying the peaceful childhood we were trying to give them. Our oldest is my stepdaughter, who's been in my life since she was three. She's 12 now. She doesn't remember a time before we lived together. I hate the thought of losing her and the joy of seeing her interacting with her siblings daily. Honestly, I expected better for myself. I expected better of him. He wrote this awful reply talking about how much he's effed up his life and always has and always will. Boo-hoo. What the F am I supposed to do with that? You can't even try for the kids? For me? For yourself? Honestly, I still effing love this idiot. I see our problems all have relatively simple, actionable solutions. He has just essentially refused to take action. Honestly, I hate my options right now. Update. Hi. Last night when I wrote this, I felt like I was screaming into the void, trying to get some of the pain off my heart so I could sleep. I did not expect these responses. Thank you to all of you who took the time to spare me a thought, whether it was patient or harsh. Your analogies, anecdotes, encouragement, bluntness and more have given me lots of food for thought. So many of your words mirror my own thoughts and reflections. This feels like an intermission before a new act. I've got a plan and I'm rooting for our family, but I also know I can do what is necessary even if it hurts, and that ultimately I will be okay. To speak to some of the themes in the comments, what does he even do? He works. He parents. He leaves a lot to me, yes, but he's by no means uninvolved in our household. With me on maternity leave right now, he's earning most of our income. He is always ready to help with the kids, and they adore each other. He used to seem like he adored me. ADHD slash depression. This feels like the underlying problem to me. I've brought it up in the past and encouraged him to get help. He's refused. I'm going to try again. Also planning to talk to some of the people he loves and trusts in this world and see if he can hear them even if he can't hear me. Walk away. Easier said than done, as we all know. This means missing out on half of my kid's childhood. I would still have to deal with the effects of his inaction peripherally and my kids would be living in it half the time. Unless something really dire happened, there would be no reason to keep them from him. I'm sorry, but not paying your taxes doesn't mean you aren't a good dad. It's not that simple. Sometimes it just means you're overwhelmed by life and crap at accepting help. Anyway, if I need to, I will. But at the moment, I'm still fighting for this family. Simultaneously, I've learned I can file my own taxes separately with an estimate of what he made. Having mine done opens doors for me financially. I have significant equity in the house, which is in my name and thus safe from tax issues, as we are Canadian. I could potentially buy him out, or I could sell, and we could both start over. I have a good job, and it would be tight, but I will do what I have to. We love this house. Two of our children were born here. It's perfect for us, so if you can, please hope for us that we all have happier years here together. Lots of love to everyone. Be kind out there. Well, OP, I understand when you say it's not that easy to walk away, especially when you've got this whole life together. It's just such a shame when somebody refuses to get help. And I can see your husband is somebody that procrastinates and hides from things in life and, as you said, feels overwhelmed. But also you said that he does help with the kids and stuff like that. But yes, a little thing can become a very big thing very quickly. Or should I say a seemingly little thing ends up becoming a very big thing. It just makes me sad when somebody tells their significant other the things that bothers them in the relationship and tries to improve that relationship by telling them about these things in the hope that it can be discussed and solutions can be found. And then instead of being willing to work with you to talk to you about it, your partner turns around and says, if at all, and doesn't even want to try. So OP, I understand why you're still fighting for the family and that's okay for you to do that. 
But I also understand at the same time why you are weighing your options in the future if this doesn't work out. I just hope your husband understands how serious this is. That his unwillingness to change to get help could literally cost him his family. You said that you will approach the people that he loves and trusts the most to discuss this with them and that hopefully he will listen to them. And I do hope that he does, but it's such a shame when your partner doesn't want to listen to you to the point that you have to turn to others for help, to mediate, so to speak, between the two of you. OP, you ask that everybody hope for the best for you and your family and that there are happier years ahead for all of you. And that is exactly what I do wish for you, OP, is that things will work out, that your husband will somehow come around and go and get help and that your family can stay intact and have a lot of happy years still ahead of you. So OP, good luck. Well, that's it for this edition of Wild Drama Stories. Thank you for listening, for being here with me today. If you did like this, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And I will see you again next time. Bye, everyone.